Well, good morning, folks, and welcome to another scenery review. This is Lee, your virtual airline pilot, back with you again, and we're looking at another scenery. This time we're in Italy, um, and this is Pisa, Galileo Galilei International Airport, Lima, Lima, India, Romeo, Papa. This is a payware scenery by AmSim, and this is version 1 for the PC version of Flight Simulator 2020. Download is 740 meg and it installs at just over 1.6 gig. So it's quite an extensive product. It's available from Sim Market and Orbix. It's actually slightly cheaper than when purchased from Orbix, but there's not a lot in it. I'll give you the prices from Sim Market. So it's 18 euros and 59 cents, which equates to roughly 18 dollars and 12 cents US, or 16 pounds 34 pence UK. UK and U U US and UK prices are estimates, and all the prices here include VAT and tax, which may vary, of course, depending on your country of purchase. So let's give you the list of features. Okay, for animated jetway, there is only one. Um, custom ground markings, high resolution custom ground textures, dirt, and other details. Detailed main terminal. Surrounding buildings fully modelled, and they are, as you can see, quite extensively and some night lighting. So I have spent a good 45-50 minutes looking over this airport and it is a really really nice product both daytime and night and we'll examine all of that. But here we are just above the airport um, it's just about 1 o'clock 1 15 in the afternoon local time although I'm recording this in the morning for you which is why I said good morning. So anyway let's as usual start with some history of this airport. So, Pisa, Galileo Galilei International Airport, Limia Indo India Romeo Papa, is a joint public military airport owned and operated by Aeronautica Militare Italiana, Toscana Aeroporti SPA, I'll put that up for you, and is located in Pisa in Italy. It is the main airport in the Tuscany region, and the tenth in Italy in terms of passengers, having served over 1.9 million passengers in 2021. It's named after Galileo Galilei, the famous scientist and astronomer who was a native of Pisa. The airport was first developed for the military in the 1930s and 1940s. The airport had its own railway station with services to and from Pisa Central, but this was closed in December 2013 to allow construction work to begin on a new fully automatic connection known as the Pisa Mover. And I'll put a picture up for you. This new rail service finally came into operation in March 2017. Besides civilian operations, the airport is also used extensively by the Aeronautica Militare, or the Italian Air Force, and is a base for, amongst others, C-130 Hercules, the C-27J Spartan transport aircraft as well. Airport is home to the 46 Brigata Aera Siriano Andalucci, or the 46 Air Brigade, Close to the end of World War II, the airport was used as a base for the 15th Air Force of the United States Army Air Force. Currently, the airport is visited by over 20 airlines and it's a focus city for Ryanair. So there's a short history for you. The airport's been around a long time. Um, the people mover, as far as I can remember, is modelled in this scenery, but it's not animated. But as I said, we'll have a close look at a lot of things. There's a huge amount of detail. Um, and it's a really, really nice product, quite sensibly priced. So, um, next thing to do, let's just have a look at runways. So, Pisa Airport, currently shown on the Jefferson charts as San Guisto, operates two parallel runways, and the airport lies at an elevation of 6 feet or 2 meters. Runway 22 left, 04 right, and we're looking at down the throat of 22 left at the moment, measures 9,816 feet or 2,992 meters and is made from asphalt. Runway 22 left, as we're looking now, features high intensity airfield lighting system and precision approach path indicators on both sides of the runway. Now for this runway, only RNAV approach options are available. So as you can see, um, they've also added um, sequenced flashing lights to this, so they've augmented the navigational aids on this runway. You've got the high intensity lighting system, PAP is on both sides as per normal. We've also got end identifier lighting, and um, this, despite the fact that there are only RNAV approaches on 22 left, 
um, you shouldn't have any problem using this runway. Let's have a quick look at 22 right. So here we are looking down the float of runway 22 right, 04 left. This runway measures 8,976 feet or 2,736 meters and is also made from asphalt. Now this runway 22 right has no instrument approach options at all posted on any of the charts. However, it does have high intensity runway lighting. And as you can see, there are no precision approach path indicators on this runway, although you do have identifier lighting here at the end and the center line. So a quick look at the other ends of both runways. So here we are looking down the float of runway 04 right, and this is the only runway equ equipped with an ILS. This is the only runway equipped with an ILS. So runway 04 right features an instrument landing system and it's certified for category 2 operations with both Z and Y opera approach options. So this is your low visibility landing runway. This runway also has high intensity airfield lighting system version 2 and precision approach path indicators again on both sides of the runway. And additionally there are VOR, Z and Y options for landing as well as a locator option available too. So this is your most instrument equipped runway, 04 right, 22 left, with 04 right having an ILS. As you can see, we've also got uh, this displaced area here as well. So it's, uh, and it's the longest of the two runways. So here we're looking at runway 04 left, which also features high intensity airfield lighting system, runway end identifier lights, and your precision approach path indicators again on the left side of the runway. Now there are VORZ and VORY approach options as well as a locator option approaching for this runway. So just to recap, you've got your ILS equipped runway 04 right for low visibility. VOR equipped approaches on 04 left. Um, RNAV approaches on 22 left at the upper end and no instrument approaches for 22 right. So this is going to be visual only. So that about does it for runways. Now let's go and have a look at the only jetway on the airport and run a test on it. So jetways. So here we are on stand 26 at Pisa. It's the only stand I think with a jetway. And as you can see I've attached the tug so it's well out of the way of the jetway manoeuvring. Let's uh, test the jetway and see if it links to my aircraft. All moving nicely. Achieve the jetway looks really quite good actually. Door opens. Okay, so that's not bad. It goes through the aircraft size skin, but that's not bad. Let's have a closer look. So there you go. It's gone through the skin, but it looks perfectly okay. And they're viewed from the other side. Let's detach. Yep, everything's looking good, everything seems to work well. So, we'll start the, the grand tour by doing the tour of the airside ramp facilities so you can look at the detailing and modelling, all of which pertain to you as a pilot when you land here. And then we'll come back across this area on the land side section to look at some of the modelling, and then we'll investigate the rest of the airport. So as you can see from this shot here, we're looking towards the, the main central area, the terminals over here, um, other bits and pieces here. Here you can see the modelling of the terrain and tarmac, which looks wonderful. Detail is really, really nice. Let's move across and have a look. The light poles look great. It's a wonderful location as well. Here you've got the mountains surrounding the airport. There's um, a, a military jet over there. We will look at the military apron shortly. But as you can see, the modelling and texturing is really, really nice here on the apron. There's a couple of um, aircraft here that are blank and have got no textures on them. Not really sure why that is. But uh, anyway, there we go. You've got the MD-11 over there as well. 
So as you can see the ramp really looks quite nice, the detail is excellent. Just stop here for a minute, here you can see some of the clutter and the weathering on the building looks good as well. There's the fire station and the fire engines that look really good, no complaints about that, they look wonderful. So let's continue the tour. As you can see lots of ground clutter, lovely markings, there are the Pisa coaches as well. I mean that's a, a really nice model of the MD-11. It's very nice indeed. Now we're coming towards the main terminal, here's my jet. That looks really nice. And there through the glass you can just see some people inside. We'll have a closer look in a minute. But uh, the modelling, the signage, all looks really, really pleasant. It's very good. Again, more clutter here. And there you can see the snow vehicles as well. I mean, the detail is very nice here. The modelling is really quite good. Certainly the building and the weathering coaches, a mixture of default and some other um, modelling locally. Here's the uh, general aviation part. And we'll just continue over here so you can get a look at some of these buildings and some of the other little features. The car models are really good. Um, really good that they've not left the car parks to photo scenery. They've actually modelled them. Here we go, and we're coming towards the um, car rental agencies area, and that's where they keep their cars. Again, some very nice modelling out here. Good to see the outskirts of the airport that are often neglected by some companies that are being done really nicely. So we start to come around land side of the airport itself and have a look at the modelling around the land side area. As you can see enhancements have been made also to the buildings off airport. They look really good. For, fauna and flora looks really nice, foliage looks great. Some more modelling up here. I mean, this looks really pleasant. Even up close, it looks really pleasant. Model the highway there as well. Now we're starting to see some of the model quality. And the signage here you can see is beautifully done. So, quick look there, we stop here, look, you can see animated flags as well. Parallax effects on the windows there, although you can actually see partly in there, which looks good. Um, the signage on the building, lettering, looks great. And these cars, okay, a little bit blurry up close, but they're not bad at all, to tell you the truth. So, let's continue past the terminal. And here you've got this lovely little restaurant here. And there you can see the inside, land side's been developed. We'll have a look in there in a minute. I'll just stop here for a sec. So I just thought I'd stop here and as you can see have a look at this nice structure here that's faithfully modelled and recreated from the original airport. And here's a nice shop sort of showing you um, the people. They've got lots of little um, persons all over the place, which I think is excellent. Um, and there you can see the little um, seating area on the left and you can see through the glass into the terminal. Uh, the, the, the ambience is really nice because they've done a nice job on the way this has been presented. So we move along the land side um, area outside the terminal here and again as you can see you've got people standing around. They're not animated but I'm really not worried about that at all. The detail is really nice, foliage looks good, the whole ambience of the place has been improved by the additional people and the way this has all been done. 
and here you've got people waiting for taxis and buses yet another structure that's been faithfully modeled from the, um, the original airport there you can see the car parks probably one of the most detailed car parks I've seen the cars are in there detail inside the car park as well as on the hoardings and the detail is wonderful it's really really nice let's just drop down a little bit uh, roadways are nicely marked signage is excellent entry barriers to the car park there the hoardings on the car park outside look really good and here here below down it there lower it down a little bit more you can see inside the car park done a lovely job on that and again just some really nice um, development here ambience on the buildings all looks really 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 nice quite impressive I really like it when the developers go to town on these areas okay as a pilot you're not going to see much of this but um, it, it's wonderful to show you what can be achieved here um, now that we've got this new simulator that's capable of so much as you can see going across the car park the cars are properly located in their spots this I believe is a petrol station and it all looks looks really wonderful now this I believe is the people mover I'll confirm that with um, checking out a couple of photographs later on but as you can see they've modeled it it's not animated yes that's the Pisa mover what they call the Pisa mover as you can see it's not animated but it's been modeled and that's the important thing including the station that it's in very nice the complete trains been modeled including the station there and just a quick look there you can see the track has been modeled quite far away into the distance so that looks good so a couple of shots from a higher level here showing you landside and the modeling and all the details that exist there's the multi-story car park that we've just looked at um, again shed loads of detail beautifully done and they're looking back towards the terminal and we'll just drop across here so we can have a look at some of the, the um, people just quickly there's loads of taxis look that's the full landside car park there and it looks great very impressive so here we are airside of the main terminal let's go inside and have a look at the inside of the terminal from the airside point of view so as you can see passengers and more passengers a nice look towards the exit gates there you've got um, departure signage um, advertising hoardings up the top there and a, a real fair variety of passenger models here too looking in the other direction there you go you can see there's um, a number of different models and um, just having the passengers there even though they're not animated just really makes this um, the brings up the, the atmosphere and the ambience just really it takes it all up a notch departure signs and they're not too bad at all they're quite readable not blurred at all which is great and a couple of different models there of course with the young boy and um, the blonde lady on a mobile phone so let's have a look at the other part of the terminal airside here here you can see passengers inside we've got the window effect which looks good again we've got similar models here but again it's, it looks really good slightly different in this part of the building and again it's a nice ambient view the lighting looks good the glass looks good the passenger models just all bring it to life which I really like and here we've got this upper deck room and there are people in there too so let's have a look 
Right, not sure that this is a control tower. I'm not really um, entirely sure. In fact, no, the control tower, as far as I understand it, is on the southeast part of the airport. Um, this probably is the ground movements control. Pisa is a little bit special, obviously, with everything sort of herded up one end and the military apron. So you probably have two control towers, one sort of ground control here. And you can see you've got a map of the airport. Um, so these guys are probably handling ground movements whereas you've got the control tower which we'll look at in a minute so now let's look at the terminal land side but inside the building okay lots of seating checking desks in the distance there there are the various entrances along the building and in the other direction. And there's a slightly closer look at the check-in desks. Um, okay, no people here, no check-in staff, but uh, no problem at all. Looks really nice, modelling's good, uh, the signage is quite crisp, and also particularly like the ducting here. You see this, this is common in many airport terminals, and I know I used to work in one, um, and you see this quite a lot in various airports in various parts of the world, certainly in Europe. So we just head outside, more people as you can see, and let's go to the other part of the main terminal and see what we can see inside here. Now this may not have been developed, I don't know, but we'll see what we can see through the glass. Okay, so the building is complete, but no real internal development in this side. But as you can see, the modelling is excellent, the weathering on the building, this all looks really nicely modelled. Glass effect, parallax effect, um, yet another little iconic structure. This airport has many of them, I believe. It's just really nice, really nice. And here you can see everything right down to the roof structure. Um, nothing's been missed. Or even the roof is nicely detailed with all the pipe work, air conditioning units. And this building looks really, really nice. And the whole airport sits in a very nice location. So let's get out across the taxiways and runways towards the control tower and have a look at signage. So as you can see, the ground markings themselves are excellent. Um, nice and clear, they're weathered as well, so they do look good. I have noticed, unfortunately, there are vehicles going on to the active runway. Um, and that's something that is also is a bit of a showstopper. Uh, needs to be sorted out, if indeed they can. But as you can see, nothing wrong at all with the ground signage and the runway entrance markings. No problem at all. See, there's a vehicle just leaving the runway there. And here is a coach that's about to go down to two left. In fact, he's turned around, but there has been a vehicle that goes down there, which is unfortunate. So here's the control tower. It's on the southeast side of the airport get a close look at it as you can see once again lovely modeling and weathering on the outside of the building it's really really nice and the best news of all it's modeled inside and people um, lovely views out through the glass um, some really good soft lighting in here as well beautiful views out across the runways and the mountains in the distance there and there you can see we're really close up to the screen and yet the details are immaculate. Very, very nice. So we're going to head out across the runway very quickly and look at parts of the airport that the military use. Here's the main military apron. You've got some hangers here. which are very nicely done uh, 
and more hangers and we come across to the second part of the military apron and here you can see vehicles and in the distance there more hangars and the, the Hercules aircraft that we were talking about in the history description nice little military bits and pieces building work going on, going on there on the right beautifully done some nice attention to detail here all works for me really pleased with it and some more military vehicles um, before we start to come on to the civilian part of the terminal here all very nice indeed very very nice there's the aeronautica militaria sign very nice okay let's turn the lighting down now to dusk and see how the airport's lit okay 10 to 7 in the evening local time and as you can see beautiful subtle lighting here looking towards the main um, terminal area there runways look good the sunset looks nice you've got lighting on the military area as well there is lighting at the control tower we'll get across and have a look in a minute and you can see also further down the main military area here you've got lighting down there as well so let's get up close to the terminal and see what it looks like so there's a nice shot showing my aircraft parked um, again if you've got this lovely window effect where you can see inside and the airport sign looks really good so this is the view in the evening when you park up on the jetway um, stand 26 this is what you'll see from inside the cockpit which is a really nice view view from the first off from the captain's side and you can also see the road signage as well which looks good and there you can see the people inside the terminal all of which adds to the ambience and looking out through the first officer's window it's just it looks lovely um, absolutely lovely really pleased, pleased with it no problem at all so there's a wider view of the terminal area um, all looks lovely and they've even managed to do parallax lighting on these buildings as well here on the land adjacent to the airport looks really good let's just do a little tour across the terminal into land side um, and to some of the interesting parts and have a look what it looks like so the lighting is lovely it's very subtle um, and it's all provided by the right sort of lights can't see any Sobo globes yet let's have a have a look I mean these light stands are excellent the hoarding advertising hoarding is lit beautiful bulb lights down there as well I mean this looks lovely and there you can see if we go a little lower you can see the terminal there and the people standing outside very nice subtle lighting even on the car park and again on the main building there to the left beautiful very very nice it's only when you get right to the outside here that you start to see the Asobo globes everything else is properly lit the way it should be which is um, very pleasing to the eye so going back airside passing over the people mover here to the left there and as you can see even the train station has got lighting which is excellent very nice even though that building's empty it looks good so we've got green taxiway lights as well which is helpful some nice lighting on that building there here's the fuel farm again with other bits and pieces that um, have been left there as well vehicles and other clutter again nice lighting provided by proper light poles 
it's always good to see. Not sure what this jet is, but obviously it's a military jet. Now we're coming up to the, uh, the military hangar or the military area. Again, just a nice idea of what it looks like at night. Some very subtle lighting here. Some of it's actually quite dark, but um, yeah, it's okay, it's fine. But it's actually quite subtle. You've got some, some lighting here, which is good. It's not entirely dark. And there are the Hercules. And some major lights. So let's head out towards the runways and taxiways. And here, coming on towards the runways, there you can see the green lighting, turn off lights. Signage looks good, no, no problem with that at all. And they're looking down the runway. Here we come across to the control tower, let's have a look. I'd be really surprised if this wasn't properly lit considering they've done the inside of it. But from here it looks good. Yeah, there it is, you can see inside, looks wonderful. And there we are looking inside. So there's a high level shot showing the airport. Um, the, the, the lighting is lovely, it's very subtle, it's very nicely done in almost all of the areas. Um, can't see. The only um, major showstopper with this airport is, as I say, is vehicles entering the runway, which seems to be happening a lot lately in some of the scenes I review. So let's just turn the lighting down to night. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because there is an awful lot of difference, but you need to see it at night as well. So 10 past 9 in the evening and there you can see the terminal area. Lighting's come up a bit more. Navigating around the runways and taxiways is not going to be a problem thanks to the green centerline lighting, the blue lighting as well. Um, Everything is nicely delineated. The ramp itself looks good. Looking in the other direction there's the military area and actually the lights come up a little bit more there. There's the view from inside the aircraft at night looking towards the terminal and the view from the captain's side. And a quick close-up view there of the terminal parking area. As you can see, plenty of lighting. Really isn't a problem with this at all. Looks really good. And just very quickly while we're here, here's an example of the modelling and certainly the lighting that they've done on the additional buildings close to the airport but outside of it. This, this is something I really like to see. The attention to detail when they go that extra mile and do this kind of work um, it certainly adds to the ambience of it and if you're flying low over this in a helicopter or if, even if you're coming in to land if you happen to look out the window like I do quite a lot it's lovely to see this and there we are looking across land side across the main terminal complex this is night time it looks beautiful very very nice okay unusually I'm gonna leave you with a night view um, while I wrap up this view and give you my thoughts um, as you can see, it's a lovely airport in a lovely location, beautifully modelled. The night lighting makes this look wonderful. It's just one of those, another one of those airports that really comes to life at night. Um, I particularly like um, <coughs> the work done on these buildings that are not necessarily part of the airport. It really adds to the whole ambience of this place. The lighting land side here on the car park, the detailing is excellent. I love the fact that they've included the people mover train, even though it's not animated. And the fact that this place has people, static people, quite a few of them, in various, various parts around the terminal complex, again, um, really lifts the ambience up. Military area has been nicely done. Good to see the Hercules and also lots of military vehicles. 
and way off the airport to the left the control tower that's been done internally and looks wonderful looks very very nice very pleased with it okay so 20 to 8 in the morning as you can see the airport's bathed in a beautiful sunrise glow and time to give you my final thoughts do I like it? Yeah, of course I do. Um, I haven't flown into Italy much, but we're now starting to gather a real number of good sceneries for this um, country. Um, and as only it's like two, two and a half hours away from the UK, it's an amazing place to go flying into. Um, do I think it's worth the price? Yeah, I think it does. 18 euros and 59 cents from Sim Market, slightly cheaper at Orbix. And remember that prices include VAT. If I look at the UK price, because obviously I'm in the UK, it's just over 16 quid. Um, it's a very nice price for the amount of work and modelling that's been done. It's a complete airport. Um, there really is nothing to sort of criticise about. It's been beautifully done. The only showstopper for me, again, is vehicles entering the runway and this time travelling down them. I've seen a bus go down two, two, two left and um, I've seen a baggage dolly actually crossing both runways as well. Um, my message to developers is please, please, please sort that out. It can be done. Other developers have done it. They've limited their vehicles to aprons and taxiways. Um, just please keep them off the runways. But that really is the only major thing. This is one of those airports that has um, really lots of lots of nice detail. Okay, it's not um, hugely detailed inside inside the terminal they've decided to model what they wanted to do but the land side w w walkways there with the uh, with the passengers and the foliage and the little um, sculptures and things that are na rel native to this airport more and more than make up for that it's a, a lovely airport well worth the price I've got no problem at all in recommending it I'm really really happy um, and just to let you know, I paid for this airport, I bought it off Orbix and um, it wasn't given to me. So um, the reviews, the comments and thoughts are my own and they've not been influenced by anyone else. So there you go, it's Pisa, Galileo Galilei International Airport, airport Lima, India, Romeo, Papa. It's a pay where scenery by developer AmSim, who's rapidly becoming a well-known and um, really capable developer. This is version 1 for the PC, downloads at 740 meg, installs at 1.6 gig, just over 1.6 gig. I'll give you the SIM market price, 18 euros and 59 cents, which equates to roughly 18 dollars and 12 cents, or 16 pounds and 34 pence UK. US and UK prices are estimates and they do include VAT and tax, which of course may vary slightly depending on which country you're in when you make the purchase. From my point of view, the, the prices are slightly cheaper at Orbix, but uh, we're, we're talking cents, really. It's a very nice airport, no hesitation in recommending it to you. So my name's Lee, your virtual airline pilot. Thank you again for joining me in yet another review. Hope you've enjoyed it, especially if you've been on the fence about this. I know a lot of people... Um, somebody was only remarking to me the other day that you know their pockets are getting emptier and emptier because so many good scenery products are coming out um, so probably you sit on the fence and think okay do I really want to buy this am I going to fly in here enough to make, make the purchase worthwhile um, it's great it's, it's a lovely airport and um, I hope you um, decide to enjoy it as much as I'm going to so thank you very much for joining me. Check out my website at virtualairlinepilot.org. I update it usually each weekend for the coming videos. Uh, that will tell you what's going on. And it will tell you a little bit about me and what I do and where, more, where I came from. So take care guys. Um, I've got a second review coming up shortly. Where I will be looking at Pristina Airport in Kosovo. It used to be part of Serbia. Um, this is an incredible scenery, just as good as this, if not better. Much more internal work's been done. Um, that will be the second review for this week. And then later, hopefully before the weekend, uh, we're going to do an Any Builds week. Okay, Any Builds have done Los Angeles. They've also done Hooper's Heliport, the home of the Los Angeles Airport Police Division. And recently just released Venice Beach as a freeware scenery, which you can get off Sim Market or off their website. So what I'm going to do is we're going to do a helicopter flight, take off from Hooper's LAPD heliport, fly into Los Angeles International, and then pop down to Venice Beach and have a look at that. And that will be a subject of a helicopter video, again, which I hope to get out this week. 
So thanks for watching. Um, take care everybody. Have a great week. I'll talk to you at the weekend. Bye bye for now.